Khwaja Bahauddin district, somewhere in the mountains of North Afghanistan. August 15, 2001, three weeks before 9-11. Salam Alaikum. Brother, these men are journalists from Belgium and want to interview Masood Sahib for their story. Lion of Panjshir, Ahmad Shah Masood, was the only Tajik in a mostly Pashtun country whose territory the Taliban could never capture. The men waited patiently for three weeks, during which time they also interviewed other Afghan leaders, Puruddin Rabbani, President of Afghanistan, and Abdul Rasul Sayaf, both of whom, like Masood, were leaders of the Northern Alliance who fought the Taliban. Finally, Masood called them into his den. One of the interviewers adjusted the microphone on him, while the other one set up a camera. Everything looked normal. But unknown to anyone else, inside the camera was an explosive. Al-Qaeda had eliminated their most deadly enemy within Afghanistan. Two days later, they attacked America. In a war that has since lasted for 18 years, America has lost more than 2,400 soldiers and spent over $2 trillion, 60% of India's annual GDP. Now Donald Trump wants out so as to fulfill one of his campaign promises. Afghanistan is a complete waste. It's time for our men to come back home. Accordingly, in September 2018, the US sent its envoy Zalme Khalilzad as a special representative to negotiate peace with the Taliban. Whom should I talk to? The person they nominated was Mullah Abdul Ghani Baradar, who co-founded the Taliban along with Mullah Omar, but was now rotting in a Pakistani jail. He had in 2009 tried making peace with Hamid Karzai's elected government. But not wanting to lose influence in the region, Pakistan's intelligence agency ISI scuttled the initiative by luring and arresting him inside a Karachi madrasa. Despite several requests by the Afghan government, he was not released with other Taliban leaders in November 2012. Now with the US pushing the deal, Pakistan released him in October 2018, just a month after Khalilzad landed in Afghanistan. But Khalilzad, a former US ambassador to Afghanistan and a perennial US favourite since the George W. Bush administration, is not trusted by his own countrymen or even by his Pashtun tribe. During the Bonn Agreement of 2001, all Afghan tribes supported King Zahir Shah, ousted in a 1979 coup to be its new president. But with the US giving him a free hand, Khalilzad chose Hamid Karza instead of the former king, whom he considered a rival. The current national security advisor to President Ashraf Ghani believes, Ambassador Khalilzad has ambitions in Afghanistan. He twice wanted to run for president in 2009 and 14. Afghans think all this peace talk is a way to create a caretaker government of which he will then become the Viceroy. Now, after nine rounds of talks in Brussels, Islamabad, Moscow and Doha, it appears a deal has been reached. You will not allow Al-Qaeda and ISIS to use Afghan lands for terror activities. The Taliban are playing along, knowing that once a deal is signed, there is little the US can do. Okay, but we want a complete withdrawal of US troops from Afghanistan and an immediate release of 5,000 Taliban prisoners. While the talks are going on, the Taliban are capturing more and more territory and now control more population than at any point since 2001. According to the Special Inspector General for Afghan Reconstruction, the Taliban control or contest 170 of the 407 districts while the rest 219 are still under the Afghan government. Moreover, the Afghan government is being kept out of the peace process because the Taliban refuses to talk with US stooges. However, in the Korean Peninsula, as the US has almost nothing to lose and though Trump has met Kim Jong-un twice, We will only hold formal talks if South Korea is a part of the process. So hopeful was Trump of an Afghan deal that he planned to host the Taliban and sign the deal at Camp David three days before the anniversary of 9-11. But the talks got derailed just four days before the fateful date. Despite an agreed ceasefire, an IED blast in Kabul killed an American soldier and 11 civilians. They thought that they had to kill people to put themselves in a better negotiation position. The peace talks are dead. But Taliban spokesman Suhail Shaheen knew that reality was something else. The US has more to lose with the end of talks. And he couldn't have been more right. Trump visited Afghanistan before Thanksgiving Afghan peace talks are back on track. 
so desperate appears Trump to close the deal that analysts fear a full US pullout would leave a vacuum which would again be filled by armed militants threatening the West. Testifying to the Senate Armed Service Committee, the new head of US Central Command, Afghanistan security forces are still weak. If we left suddenly, they would not be able to defend their country. The biggest winner in a US pullout would be Pakistan, and India would stand to lose the most. If the US leaves, Afghanistan would likely again fall into Taliban hands, which is controlled by Pakistan's ISI. They would get hold of all the infrastructure and airstrips constructed by the US at a cost of over a hundred billion dollars, including Bagram and Shindad air bases, Kandahar International Airport, Camps Dwyer and Lethenik Marine Corps airfield, schools, and hospitals. Not only that, with Afghanistan being the largest producer of opium in the world. Pakistan would get a cut of the one and a half billion the Taliban make through opium trade, enough to finance their war against India without the need of any funding from the U.S. Mujahideen training camps would once again flourish, and terrorists would be sent to Indian lands. India has always supported the government in Afghanistan, right from Hamid Karzai to the present head Ashraf Ghani. The country has invested more than eleven billion dollars into Afghanistan's economy. Which would be money gone down the drains if the Taliban made a comeback. It would lose access to the Delhi-Kabul air corridor by which India bypasses Pakistan to reach Central Asia and parts of Europe, and seriously endanger the future of the strategic Chabahar port on which India plans to spend an additional US eight billion dollars, one hundred thousand crore rupees. While the world may worry about the repeat of human rights violations by the Taliban. Trump sees this as only an opportunity to fulfill his promise as a means to win a second term. The pullout cannot come at a worse time for Afghanistan, where a closely fought and delayed election result in favor of the incumbent Ashraf Ghani may be violently contested by his rival Abdullah Abdullah. This time we leave you with a lovely poem from Rudyard Kipling. When you're wounded and left on Afghanistan's plains, and the women come out to cut up what remains, just roll to your rifle and blow out your brains, and go to your god like a soldier. Subscribe to Bizbo and click on the bell icon to get notified whenever Bizbo releases a new video. Sources of all our information is listed in the video description section.